Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I decided I was going to challenge myself to edit a photo completely in Lightroom, including retouching. A lot of people think that you can't actually do a lot of retouching in Lightroom, but it is possible. It's just much easier in Photoshop. But I figured it would be a fun video for people who actually don't own Photoshop and own just a standalone version of Lightroom, or they're not quite familiar with Photoshop, or they're just intimidated by it. And this will give people an idea of how you can actually go about retouching inside of Lightroom already. So with that said, let's get started on this. So the first thing I usually like to do is I start by tweaking the white balance back and forth. And I do this just to kind of like reset my eyes. And then I try to aim for a neutral skin tone, uh, something that's not too warm or too cold, because I like to do my color toning at the very end, just to kind of guarantee that it's, you know, kind of something I can really work with and it's very flexible and it doesn't have an off tone to begin with. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and toggle back and forth just to make sure I like the change I made. I think it's a little bit too green now that I'm looking at it. I think maybe like minus three would probably be a little bit better. I kind of got rid of that pink tone to it. All right, so uh, I'm pretty happy with where my exposure is. If you look at the histogram, it looks pretty nice, but uh, I usually just try to tweak everything and just see if I want to like brighten something up or darken it down with the exposure slider at all. Uh, I think I might actually want to darken it just a little bit. Okay, so now let's play with our highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. I usually like to go for something a little more neutral until I do dodge and burn, but I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to do dodge and burn in Lightroom, so I'm going to actually try that, but no promises that it will work. I'm kind of just trying to figure this out as I go. I actually haven't really planned much of this video yet, so you will be along for the ride with me on this. You will be learning as I learn. I'm just going to use the tools that I know I have available. Uh, I always like to pump in a little clarity just because I find it gives everything a little bit of pop. If we toggle this back and forth here, you'll see it just kind of makes all the little like tiny details pop. Uh, one thing that clarity actually does is it increases micro like contrast. It's more like your mid-tones and stuff like that. So if you look at like just the sharpness on things, it, it definitely increases it and gives everything a little bit of shine and pop and everything like that. So I really like using clarity, uh, just a tiny bit. Um, if you overdo it, it starts to look ugly, but usually somewhere in the, uh, seven to 10 range, I would say is where I like to stick. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to HSL and I'm going to just kind of toggle this back and forth and see if there's any like colors I want to change. I'm pretty happy with that at zero. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and toggle this yellow down to like a red color so that way this background tends to match better with the brick over here. And I'm going to go ahead and decrease the saturation because it's a little too vibrant right now. So if we go ahead and toggle that you'll see all I do is I just kind of tried to blend that. And we're just going to keep moving these around and it's, it's really kind of a simple process and um, it doesn't make like a huge deal, uh, a huge difference, but I just figured I would kind of go through this with you guys just because this is, uh, you know, usually how I start the process to my, uh, raw images. Okay. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and adjust the luminance. I usually like to brighten the skin a little bit or, uh, the background. So I usually raise my luminance on oranges and yellow. Okay, so moving on, we are basically done with all of our settings for this at the moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we started with so far and where we've come. And right now, basically, I've just added some contrast and shifted around a little bit of colors. Um, kind of just did that. And I'm sitting here toggling like this. You can also hit, I think it's uh, backslash to do this. If you wanted to, you can actually hit backslash on the keyboard to kind of toggle back and forth before and after. You don't have to do it in the history tab. 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go into this tool right here, which is not the one I thought it was. That's radial filter. We're going to go to this tool, which is a spot removal tool. And typically this is used to actually go in and like take out sensor dust spots and stuff like that on your image, but I'm going to use it to actually clean up the subject's skin here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in actually to three to one, uh, because I'm on a 4k screen. So that's a little more accurate. And then I'm going to resize my brush tool with the bracket keys. I'm going to go ahead and just place that there. And Lightroom works a lot different than Photoshop. What actually happens when you use the healing uh, or the spot tool is it brings up this little circle where you can actually drag it around and then select where you're going to clone your heel from. So in a way, this can actually be kind of useful, but uh, in the past, it's been really slow. I'm on the latest version of Lightroom right now, which is the uh, classic, uh, which is, you know, 2018 when they updated with the cloud and everything. So... Um, keep that in mind that this is actually seems to be dramatically improved. It seems a lot faster. It used to be that this was a very slow tool. I was actually not looking forward to this. I specifically chose a subject that had good skin to begin with just because I figured I'd spend a lot of time in this portion just trying to heal things uh, with the uh, very, very bad spot tool. So... I'm just going to kind of go through and clean up anything that looks uh, like a blemish or is slightly distracting. Uh, I'm very, very uh, nitpicky with my retouching. I tend to uh, clean up everything I can just because I like everything to be really clean. So I'm just going to keep going through here. Don't want to pick up that hair at all. Go ahead and resize that. I'm actually going to just delete this one because I think I made it too large. So what you can do is, is you can actually resize per uh, spot or sample that you're taking or whatever you're healing. Um, just by using the bracket key and like kind of actually try to keep it the size of whatever you're working on. And that's if you want to be a little more accurate. I'm trying to do this somewhat fast because I know this is going to be a very long video and I don't want to keep you guys, you know, too uh, long. I'd, I'd rather you be able to learn something a little more quickly. So we're just going to continue this healing and we're just going through bit by bit at the moment. Now, one thing that is actually really good about the way that Lightroom does their healing is it actually really uh, does a good job preserving your skin texture. You're not actually doing too much. Uh, a lot of people tend to over retouch when they use um, things like the healing brush or clone stamp or uh, frequency separation, stuff like that. But this tends to keep it looking really natural just because of the way the uh, brush is actually programmed. All right, so just continuing on there. Sorry, I had to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I wanted to make sure everything was recording properly because it's been a little while since I did this. Last time I just did a speed edit because this micro, my old microphone was broken, which luckily I got the replacement in yesterday, so I'm able to make a video for you guys today. So I'm like really actually excited about that. Um, hopefully it makes a pretty big difference to the quality of the sound and you guys appreciate it because it I always had a very hard time being consistent with my old microphone because it would never actually work and then the sound levels would always be different and the noise would be really bad sometimes and other times it would be absolutely fine and I was constantly having to use noise reduction or not use noise reduction. It was just really hard to actually nail down consistency in the quality of my audio. So hopefully, oops, accidentally removed my flag. Hopefully this actually will fix that and be a much better uh, microphone for this. I know when I watch tutorials and anything like that, if they're using anything that's like subpar audio wise, it drives me crazy. Like I just cannot stand it.
Now, I'm just looking for any tiny little bit of unevenness in the skin, and like I said, I tend to retouch uh, quite heavily just because I, that's something I'm known for, is I have really clean skin, and that's just kind of my goal is to uh, make the person look as best as they can. Uh, some people don't like when it gets overly retouched, they think it looks too fake or whatever, but I mean, for the type of imagery I like to create, it works for me. Uh, I can definitely tone it down if uh, it re is required by a retouching client or something like that. But uh, typically, for my own images, this is how I like to retouch. Mm -hmm. So, still doing the same thing, just looking for any little thing that be could be perceived as a blemish or that I might want to retouch and if you'll notice if it shoots up a uh, auto sample like way away from it I always drag it back nearby just because I don't want to sample texture from another area that really shouldn't be there um, I'd rather keep it you know somewhat nearby and natural looking so it's still just going through doing this little by little trying to get this all cleaned up and I'll toggle the before and after here and right now it's not looking like it's making too much of a difference but I'm sure it's going to be quite huge uh, once we actually toggle it because I know I've placed a lot of markers if you actually look at all the pins I've put down it's quite a lot of trying to resize there and accidentally hit P So yeah, this is taking a very, very long time of skin retouching, and this is why I prefer Photoshop, because this is something that would normally take me, I'd say, five minutes if I'm really in the zone. Uh, if I'm going to spend a lot of time on it, this is something that would take me a little bit longer, um, probably like 10 minutes tops, but I think I probably have already spent like 15, I don't know, it feels like a long time. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just uh, exaggerating, but yeah, it, it feels like this is taking forever. Now see here I'm trying to smooth out a line so it's okay that I pull from a texture that's a little bit far off just because I actually really want to see that uh, kind of go away. I want to see that smooth out. I'm not trying to maintain a texture that's believable. So that's an okay line or okay sample I should say to make. Okay, so I think I'm basically done with healing. Let me go ahead and resize this. Not quite that much. I meant to do two to one. Actually, even two to one is not a great sample. Let's do one to one here. And then, can I toggle that to where it'll show what I've actually made? So if we look, that's all the retouching I did with that very, very simple, rudimentary uh, healing uh, tool in here and it's basically just kind of a clone stamp mixed with a healing brush. It's not super accurate I'm actually seeing uh, some redness in here and down in here that I would like to go take care of so I'm gonna go do that right now um, Normally I would you know say I'll take care of that another time But I'm trying to show just how much retouching you can get done inside of Lightroom uh, If you absolutely need to so I think I will take care of it for you guys just to further demonstrate so Uh, we got other samples here that are getting in the way. Don't want to pick up any hair because that'll look strange. Um, let me go ahead and close that and see if that actually made it, be made it better or made it worse. 
Oh yeah, that's helping. Oh, uh, where was it that I was seeing the other bit that I needed to retouch? Let me back back out so I can take a look from afar again. Uh, there's this little bit right there. Yeah, they actually really did improve the speed of this tool. This used to be extra painstaking in uh, Lightroom 2017 or whatever. I think, was it 5.5 or 6.5? Whatever the version was before they recently split it into Classic and CC. Uh, it was so slow like it was like trying to pull your hair out I, I tried it once before to make a video like this and i just i didn't have the patience for it i ended up quitting midway through um but for the most part i think we are done with this uh retouching portion of this image let me put my navigator back down and if you look that is a lot of spot healing we just did so let's go ahead and close that and then let's toggle it and that is before, and that's after. And it's definitely not a Photoshop cleanup. It's not really good and smooth, but for the most part, uh, a client would be pretty happy with that. I think I want to get this area just a little bit more just because it's kind of uh, seeming like it needs it. I'm going to go ahead and delete that, actually. And I'm going to zoom back in. So let's go up here. I uh, keep trying to remind myself not to use my uh, Photoshop shortcuts for like zooming into things and stuff like that because I'm so used to it. It's like second nature by now, but I'm like, no, I can't do that. So I have to pop back up here and use the navigator. All right, so let me go ahead and toggle this. All right, yeah, I think that looks great. Um, we do have a little bit of a spot there. It appears to be between the lip and the tooth. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in 4 to 1 here. Ooh, trying so hard not to use that shortcut. And I'm decreasing my rating. <laughs> Let me go ahead and switch to spot healing. Oh, it takes forever to resize. Okay. And toggle that. Perfect. All right, so now that we're done with that, we basically have our subject retouched. Let's go ahead and take a look at the clothing, make sure there's nothing around that needs to be retouched. Let's look at the background, see if there's anything that is just jumping out at us as something that needs to be fixed right away. And I'm not really seeing anything like that. So with that done, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and go to the curves here and let's try to you know add a little bit of contrast here with a slight S curve. I want it too bright. I want it a little brighter, but not like too bright. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see the difference that made. That just kind of adds a little bit of punch to it. Um, I'm not 100% convinced I want to stick with it yet, so let me just kind of... Hmm. Maybe a little less. I hate using curves in Lightroom because it's always trying to add an extra point with it I don't want. It always thinks I want to make another one and it ends up getting some really strange results. All right, I think that looks good. Definitely added a little bit of nice contrast to it. So since we already did our HSL, what we can do is come down here to split toning if we want to further tone this. And let's go ahead and add some, I'd say yellow, kind of orange to the highlights a little bit. And then some blues to our shadows. I'm a big fan of using opposite colors. I like yellow and blue. And uh, if we want to do more orange, we could do orange and teal. But I think a blue would look better for this image. Blue and yellow. So let me actually go bring this over a little. And then let's decrease the saturation because I don't like a lot of saturation in my tones. I just want a little bit to kind of like push the image to another direction. So 
So see, that's it's very subtle what I just did there. Uh, I think we could actually probably do a little bit more. So one thing you can do is if you want to check your shadow to highlight balance, you can just crank the saturation all the way up and then move this balance slider until you actually get it to where you want it applied. Because I would like a little more blue in the image, but I don't want it to apply too much. So I want to kind of just tweak this here until I see that like, okay, it's picking up in the shadow areas of there and like on the side there of her uh, shirt and up on the actual background and stuff like that. So I do want that, but I didn't want it too much on the actual highlight of the face. So this kind of helps you fine tune that. So let's go ahead and lower our saturation again on both of these. Bring that blue back up. I think about 10 looks good. And let's do the same with that. And it is very, very subtle in the difference this actually makes. I think we can actually probably go ahead and take it just another step further, just because I would like it to be a little more noticeable than that. I think I like it better with that kind of orange to it. Um, I'm going to decrease the saturation just a little bit here just because I'm not too fond of it being that saturated, but I do really like the overall look we're getting. Okay, so now with all of that done, what I would like to do is actually kind of enhance the eyes a bit here. So I'm going to go to the brush tool or the adjustment brush, and then I'm going to take the exposure and dial it into probably about 30 actually so 0 0.30 not 30 overall because that would just max out the exposure to like five or six or something like that and then she does have blue eyes so i think we can leave that at minus 15 and let's just keep saturation at zero for now and let's go ahead and zoom in i don't want to go four to one but two to one sounds good and then just resize this brush and go ahead and paint it in just over the iris. As you'll see, it's both brightening it and bringing out the blue because we do have that minus uh, 15 to the temperature. So let's go ahead and take a look at the difference here. And that is quite dramatic. Uh, I think we can add a little more contrast, maybe something like 10. Uh, sharpness, let's add some of that like 50. I, I like to bring out a lot of detail in here. And if you look, it actually does a great job of that. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit more. We'll do four to one and just look at the like tiny details in the eye just by using that sharpness adjustment. Like it just really makes them pop. I think we could even go higher than 40, uh, 48. I think we could actually probably go all the way up to like 75. And just look at all the details that brings in. It's crazy. Uh, what I'd actually like to do is create another one another layer here and let's go ahead and zero this out and what you can do is you can either t hit this and then type it in like go like that and type in zero or what you can do is you can actually double tap on whatever it says and it will automatically reset it to zero so let's go ahead and do that and then let's bring up our sharpness here and then let's paint over the eyelashes just because i like to sharpen my eyelashes quite a bit um i find it adds some uh, extra dimension to a subject. I, I really like to sharpen selectively on eyelashes and lips. Um, so just kind of penciling that in. I also like to sharpen the lips, as I mentioned. So I'm going to just come on down here and use this sharpening brush. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the difference that made to the lips and see it just gives them a lot more detail same with the eyelashes let's take a look at the difference it made okay and let's take a look at these that is a lot sharper look how much more crisp that actually looks all right so let's go ahead and go back to one to one 
and take a look at the overall image. I think I want to make some more tweaks to the eyes. So I'm going to go back to a two to one zoom. I'm going to go ahead and decrease my color temperature just a little bit to make the blues pop more. The other option I could do that I wasn't quite thinking of is I could bring up the saturation to bring in more of every color, not just blue. So that little tiny bit of yellow in the eye, I can bring that up with my saturation there. So I think that looks actually really good. So let's go ahead and go back to this. Let me reset that, close the crop. And let's just toggle this. And let's pay attention to what happened to the eyes and with the sharpening that we did. It's toggling everything right now. So you're also seeing the retouching that was done. But I think that looks really good so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out. I go ahead and hit fill and I'm just looking for anything else I might want to do the image um, I think I might want to add a little bit of a vignette uh, typically I use uh, a curves adjustment layer in Photoshop but I don't have that in here so I'm trying to think of how I can do that I could use either an adjustment brush or I could use the uh, post crop vignette here but I don't think that'll look very good. Uh, uh, it's not too bad, actually. I'm going to make it a little darker than I normally would, just so I can kind of play with it. Let the midpoint out. I think that roundness looks good. Maybe feather it a bit more. I think about 25 looks good. And let's take a look at what that vignette actually did. Pretty dramatic. Uh, it's actually almost too dark. I think I'm going to lighten it up. It's because actually after seeing the before and after, I'm like, okay, I, I went overboard. A lot of times it's helpful to toggle back and forth like this when you're doing any kind of adjustment just because that way you can check, like, did I go too far? Because when you're actually moving the sliders and you're watching it change in real time, it's really easy to overdo it and think you didn't do much and actually you've completely gone overboard. So always keep that in mind. Um, we might want to add some grain later just to give this a kind of film look, but I'm not 100% sure on that yet. So I want to look around just a little bit more and think of what else I can do to the image because I'm really happy with where it's at, but I think there's still some more we could do somehow. Um... You know, I, I'm starting to think maybe I want a little more stylized uh, tone to it. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm just going to put a little more blue and a little bit more orange. Actually, I think I might change that back to more of a yellow. And is there any way we could darken that blue? I don't want it that dark, but I just don't want it so light. Yeah, let's move it over a little bit more and make it a little more blue. So let's go ahead and take a look at the difference that that just made. And I'm not 100% sold on it being at 26. Let's try just 20. Go ahead and confirm that. All right, so toggling that back and forth, I think I do like the extra blue to it. I just wanted to, and the extra yellow, I just wanted to give it a little more of a stylization just because I can't rely on my usual tools that I use for color toning, which if you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend you check it out. I went through all the tools I use in Photoshop to color tone an image. Um, Lastly, I suppose if we really wanted to, we can mess with camera calibration, but 
uh, typically I don't tend to do that after. That's usually something I say for the beginning, but there wasn't a lot of color to mess with in the beginning. So uh, I'm gonna actually gonna go ahead and zoom in here and uh, let's do one to two, not two to one. So we're kind of close, but not too close. And let's go ahead and add some grain. And let's go one to one and kind of get a look at this. And I, I actually think that looks really pleasing as it is right now. Um, if we toggle that, you'll see what I'm talking about. It just kind of adds in that kind of faux film grain. It looks really nice. Um, if we increase the size, it just gets a little more rough. Actually, I think I liked it where it was. The size of 25. Like, I actually think that looks really good. Let's go ahead and make this a even 40 because I'm OCD as hell. Um, but other than that, I, I think we're looking really good here. So let's go ahead and toggle this before and after. And that zoomed in way too much. So that's before and that's after. Start basic retouch, added grain colored the eyes a little extra, brightened them, sharpened them, um, sharpened the lips, and then color toned the entire image. And let's go back to full. And it's gonna keep doing that weird zoom, but that's our before, and that's our after, and that was done completely in Lightroom. All right, so I thought I was done, but then I remembered, I said I was gonna attempt to dodge and burn on this. So. Let's do that. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in one to one again. And then I'm gonna to go to the adjustment brush here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change my exposure. I'm gonna set that to 0 0.2 positive. And now I'm gonna go ahead and actually dial that in just so it's at 0 0.2. Then I'm going to make sure everything else is clear. I don't wanna have any other uh, effects active. I just wanna be changing exposure. And now I'm going to treat this like I do a normal dodge and burn where I try to even out uneven parts of skin. Uh, and if you'll notice right here, there's a kind of awkward shadow there. So I'm going to just go ahead and paint on that. That definitely helped a little bit. Let me kind of brighten up there too. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit new. And by switching from edit to new, that means that this next brush will also be brightening that area. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually adjust my exposure. I don't want it that much brighter, but I do wanna add just a little lightness to it. So now if I go ahead and hit close on this, and then I toggle my history here, we'll see the difference that that actually made to this little area. And you'll notice that it, it definitely evened it out and made it not as dark. Uh, and kind of just helped bring that up. I, I think the exposure might be a little too high overall. So I'm gonna go back into the adjustment brush and then I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna bring this exposure down just a little here. Let's try like 0.9 instead. No, let's actually give it just a little bit more. Not that much. And we're jumping in very large increments now. So I will just dial this in with the number pad uh, we'll do like one five instead. Let's go ahead and close. And now let's toggle. Much better. Uh, a little more natural. We do still have a little patch of darkness here, but I'm not going to waste my time trying to do that too much. So that was basically kind of just our fix of that little local area. Now what we're going to do is what's called global dodge and burn, which is where you dodge and burn the whole face to add contour. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that adjustment brush, and then we're going to keep that at positive 20. Actually, let's go negative first, because I always like to do my shadows first. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that negative. And I like to convert to black and white before I do a uh, edit. And we still have our split toning of blue and yellow, but uh, I should be able to make these adjustments on the adjustment brush and then switch back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test that theory real quick. Uh, just because I've never I've never actually done this before. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a very quick adjustment to the side there. And there. And let's see if I can go back to color with those adjustments still intact. 
Yep, that does work. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and bring that in, and I'm gonna keep those uh, that painting that I just made. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that, and I'm gonna just continue. So I'm still on that, so it's still editing. And we're gonna just resize that feather to about the size of where we want to paint. The split toning looks really strange in black and white. I know uh, people used to actually add this kind of like split toning to black and white images to give them color. And now that we're in black and white, I can see where there's uneven patches and stuff like that. But I don't want to spend too much time on this just because I know this video is already super long. So I'm going to go ahead and go to new now and let's take away that minus 20. And let's actually raise the exposure now. So let's go ahead and resize our brush. Uh, and that's not working because I'm still in the actual like dialing in amount of the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this highlight up. Actually, you know what? Let's undo that. Bring the highlight up there. Make the brush larger. Paint that highlight there. Bring the brush back down. We're just changing our sizes here. Put a highlight there. Highlight on the chin. And let's go ahead and convert this back to color. And close this. And I don't want to zoom out too much, but I wanted to come back far enough to where I can actually do this. So let's go back to where we started with grain and then up here. And that's the little bit of dodge and burn we did do with uh, Lightroom. And it actually did make a pretty significant difference if you actually look at it. Uh, it definitely even that part out right there, added some contour to it and kind of made the pace pop a little bit. So let's look at it from afar just because zoomed in like that, it might be not showing as much as it actually is to the entire image. So let's go ahead and take a look at it from here. And as I suspected, it's a much larger difference when looked at from afar, at least in my opinion. I think it definitely uh, helped at, ooh, and we went to black and white. It definitely helped add um, a little bit of pop to the image and made it a little more even on that one spot and I think it looks really good. So let's toggle that overall before and after one more time now with the dodge and burn. And it always is gonna do that. So before, after, before, after. And that was done 100% with Lightroom. So it is definitely possible to retouch in Lightroom. It just takes a lot longer than in Photoshop. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you were able to learn something today. If you were, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.